All right, mate, let's get into it. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the School of Light. Um, this is another image breakdown, and I want to introduce you to Mick Unwin. Hiya, Mick. How you going? Mick's another Aussie. He, although we just realized, Mick just told me that he was born in New Zealand. So we are, we are brothers. There we go. Lost in a big land. <laughs> so Mick is, um, Mick is based in Victoria, uh, which is in Melbourne here in Australia. Uh, and I want to introduce him to you. So Mick has, as with all of these first sort of batch of, of image breakdowns, I wanted to introduce you to people who uh, have been around for a while, uh, pushed some boundaries, people that I see them do work that I, uh, and you'll, you'll learn in a bit, uh, you know, that, that blows me away. But we, um, we actually met in a drain. <laughs> <laughs> which is hilarious. Uh, I'm going to pop this image up on the screen now uh, that we're going to be referring to, but this is in a drain. And, and um, as you're going to learn when you head down the McUnwin rabbit hole, he has a bit of a, uh, um, a drain fetish, I think it could be called, mate. Um, sure, yeah. But it, who would have thought that? Who would have thought that a round tunnel under the ground could be, uh, you know, light painted, photographed, created in so many incredible a ways, mate. And I think one of the reasons I'm wrapped to have you with us today is that you, um, you, you push boundaries and you create beautiful work, uh, but you, you do it constrained in a, in this little thing. And, and I think that's wonderful. So, um, Mick's been light painting since now I had a bit of a look around mate on Flickr and the earliest light painting of yours I could find was about 2012. How That's does that correct, sound? Yeah. It sounds about right. So 2012 of the early heady days of Flickr. Um, now, here's an interesting thing. I just got off the, the, the internet with, um, uh, with Trevor Williams, who founded Light Junkies. So that was, that was pretty amazing. But so Mick's that been around that. for a long time. He, he's, a, um, he, he's, he's still an active light painter, which is amazing. Um, how... Mate, talk to me a little bit about, uh, before we get into the image, I, one of the things, what is the attraction to drains and light painting, man? Uh, look, I think, because you can go down there during the middle of the day and you can light paint. Um, you know, you don't have to wait for the darkness. It's, it's there, all there for you. Um, you've got all the different shapes, uh, whether it be, you know, an RCP, which is a um, reinforced concrete pipe, just the, the round ones, or you've got yeah. like different mummy shapes or um, domes, all, all sorts of different types of drains. And it's where I they... Love, I love them, yeah. Where they, of course, there's all the bits where they join and stuff. Yeah, uh, all the different features, um, the rust and, and mould, uh, even roots that are hanging down. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know? That's true. That's yes. I remember I, the night we met there, there was, there was water coming down. But I think one of the things with drains in this image that we're talking about today, kind of, you can see it. One of the things I love about going down drains and, and when I came, when you and I met down at that, uh, that drain that night, that was the first time I'd ever been in a drain. It was, it was quite right. sort of, it was a little, um, it was a little overwhelming because you, you realize that you're in this tight, you're under the city, uh, but the thing that blew me away, and for people that do draining and, and stuff, you probably take it for granted. There is so much graffiti. So there's yeah. all that color and texture and, and stuff. To and, and they make for great photos too, um, yeah. with obviously for obvious reasons with the colors and yeah, yeah, we, yeah. you throw them into your composition and, um, you know, it's, uh, yeah. Oh, well, amazing. Yeah. amazing. But it, it, I, I hadn't actually thought about the whole thing of being able to light paint during the day. That's a no brainer. I mean, it's so obvious. Yeah. Man. So let's take a look at this picture here. Now it, it, it's um, when I was looking through your photographs, this sort of just leapt out at me. And, and I'm, sure. I, I think, I think a good way to do this is I'll give you, I just want to, before you get into it, I want to share a little bit about how it makes me feel because I, I know what it's like when it's your image, you kind of, you look at things maybe differently, but when I see this photograph, the very first thing that just leaps out at me is it's just massive. Like it is the scale, the reflection is outrageous. Uh, it, and it looks like a giant mouth and, and the dude's holding a gun. And there's just, there's a, and then once you start sort of going into it, it's quite a complex sort of a deep photograph. Um, 
talk to me before we get into the technical, before we get into sort of the steps, how do you, when you're looking at this scene when it's dark, how do you talk to me about the thought process of designing a photograph like this, Mick? Sure. Well, look, where we got there, it was initially it was light and we'd, we'd set up, um, cause I did it with two other guys, um, Chris and Luke, which I'd like to help uh, say thanks to for helping make the image as well. Yeah. So we got there on sort of dusk and, um, we had sort of enough time to set the cameras up and thought about what we were going to do. And, um, we we're just playing around, getting some good shots and all of a sudden, man, we just, um, it put it all together and, and we just, I think we nailed it. Um, I think it's a striking image, like you say. It, the composition's good, even though the horizon line is, or the water line is right in the middle. It just sort of evens it out. I, I don't know. It works, doesn't it? Like, it does, man. It it it's it's a striking photograph. The thing, so so it um, obviously the steel wool is a thing. Now I have a question for you, and and this is the first thing I thought when I looked at this man. It looks like that steel wool is very close to that guy there or that person. That is well. That's right behind him, um, yeah. which is you know you've you've got to be careful with that stuff too. I just want yeah. to add, um, yeah. This, you know, you can burn your friends, you can burn yourself. Um, yeah. You should yeah. really be wearing all the the proper protective gear, um, glasses. Um, even if you're not doing it in water, like you know, have a fire extinguisher handy. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't wear something that was is going to catch fire either. Like for some, I don't know, some plastic clothing or anything. You know. Um, yeah. You kind of want like a a good cotton or wool yeah. woolen type of jumper or something. That's yeah, a great be, idea. It could be dangerous. So just, and just be mindful if you are going to use steel wool. Yeah. Plus, you've got the bushfire. We've, oh we've had some pretty crazy bushfires down here. Yeah. So um, please be mindful when you're doing using steel wool in your shots too. It's but so yeah, important. It can be can be dangerous, mate. You know that. Yeah, um, I do. I do. How many um, how many attempts? Did you knock this out first try or did it take well, a few I tries? I think this was like, yeah, two, two or three attempts and, and we got that. Um, Amazing. You know, Chris was spinning the, the ball of um, wool there, yeah. the steel wool behind Luke and he was off centre a little bit um, yeah. and, and then he ran back and backlit the shot with his uh, lead lenser uh, to get that the white around yeah. the, um, sort of like I guess you call it the mouth of the, of yeah. the shot there. Yeah. The um, he, and that really made it pop, I think. Step me through the steps. So what, 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 what happened first? What happened last? Uh, okay, so, so first we had uh, Luke there. Luke's standing there um, holding the gun, yeah. um, which is actually a toy gun we found on Hard Rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> toy gun. We actually found it that night. But, um, so I had Luke standing in, in the position, uh, and he's holding the gun, and uh, I sort of told him to, to put the gun to the side so you could see it a bit better because the way he, he was holding it, he was sort of hiding behind his leg there. Yeah. And um, I think we initially just took a, just a backlit with the, um, with the torch just to yeah. sort of see what the silhouette would, would leave there. And, and once we sort of had Luke in position, then we decided to um, play around with the steel wool. And I th like I said, I think we did like one or two takes with the steel wool that was just a bit off. Um, and we moved Luke back or forward a couple of times just to get him sort of in the right position. And then um, after uh, Chris spun the steel wool, then he uh, stepped back a, a, a few feet, I think, just yeah. to catch that light yeah. um, around the top of the mouth there, where, like I said before. Yeah. And, and, mate, that was pretty much it. And when, when I hit the shutter, it was 27-second it was exposure, I think. When I hit the shutter release... I just said, oh, we're done. I'm done. <laughs> I, was, I was wrapped. I could, you could go home. You know? yeah, offer a cold beer after that. Yeah, we're done. We weren't there for, for too long, but yeah. I reckon, you know, something looking, I mean, this is on the screen. For, you know, everyone can see this on the screen here, but I have it over here in, in, in big scale. And it's made me think about something, Mick. I reckon, you know, in this, in this crazy time we live in of, of sort of, you know, scroll, 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 scroll through, through images on social media and stuff. I've been sitting here looking at this for, for minutes now and something has just leapt out at me that I want to, people that are looking at it, think about. 
the reflection in the foreground feels like it's really close to me. It feels, it feels like I could reach out and touch the, 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 the bottom of the reflection. It feels like it's, it's almost folded over. And what it's made me think about is I don't reckon people pause and look at images for long enough these days. And, I, and, it, and you know, we were talking before about Flickr. Back, in, back then, you would. You would an image would come up and it would be on your computer screen mainly because I don't even think we had like fancy phones back then. But mm -hmm. if, if you know, you pause and you just let yourself sort of sink into this image, that foreground is, is mind-bending. It, it, it's... Um, <laughs> How low is the camera to the water? That, that's pretty much lapping the water. Yeah. Um, the, the, there was actually a little ledge. That, that's a little um, ledge there to, to hold all that water in. It's basically to keep people out. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so um, like the guys, they had gumboots on in there and the, the water was like lapping the top of the gumboots, you know. <laughs> So, um, yeah. but, but the camera is right there on that ledge. Yeah, it's um, amazing. Pretty much just, just touching the water there. It's one of the things I, I, you know, this image that's behind us here, I take, I take my cameras in the water a lot. Um, and, and everything changes when you get down low. I, 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 get, fr I get frustrated when I, um, you know, when I see people uh, sort of standing there with the cameras here, it's like, well, I don't get frustrated, but what I think to myself all the time is, come on, get yes. down, get on the ground, get one of those little tripods and, and try sure. different angles. Com common mistake, isn't it, to, um, to shoot at so. sort of at eye level? I think so, I, because this image would be, it, it just would, there's no way it would be even remotely the same if that camera wasn't sitting on top of the water. I, I think it's, um, you know, and, and here's, a, here's another thing that, that, that um, that I, that I want to point out with this photograph, I want people to think about is, you know, I, there's a thing called pixel peeping, right? And people, people uh, will often look at images and they'll, they'll, they'll look at it and try and find something that, that, that is, that's not tech, either technically right or something with it. And I reckon when I was looking through your photographs and to select one, um, this has stopped me in my tracks. It absolutely stopped me in my tracks because the overall impact of the photograph uh, is there. And, and, if, and, you know, if I look up on the right-hand side there, there's maybe a little bit that might be overexposed and that stuff just does not matter, Amec. Do you, do you agree that... that oh, to totally. Yeah, it's, it's not, not about the technical side of it. It's... it's if, does the image grab you? Well, you know, it, if you like it, well, it, it's all, yeah, it, it yeah. grabbed me. When I saw it, I, like, I wasn't too worried about you know, if it was blown out a little bit. I, I can see it is a little blown out. Um, but overall, it's, it's a, a pretty striking image. It doesn't I, matter. I think, yeah. that, that stuff, it just so doesn't matter. And, and I think the reason I like to mention that is this, you know, especially if you're watching this and you're, you're a, a newbie to light painting, we live in this time now with social media and Facebook and Instagram where, you know, everything needs to be perfect. And um, I've been told to, 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 I'm not allowed to swear on these videos, uh, but if that, you don't leave images on the hard drive uh, because you're worried about what people are going to think about it. If, if you create an image like if, if you had been worried about a little hot spot or here, we would never have got to see this image. And I reckon today I hear people talk on social media and I talk and talk about photography like, oh, well, you know, if it's not perfect, I don't want people to see it. Man, mm. it's, it's, it's so dangerous that that sort of thing. Uh, I, I don't know. A lot, a lot of my, so, sorry, Dennis, a lot of my photos have errors in them. Um, yeah. I, I'm pretty relaxed. <laughs> well, I'm the same. Look, I'm, I'm, my, you know, yeah, man, I'm the same. Photos. I am the same. Well, I think it's a beautiful image. I, I, I really appreciate you spending some time chatting us, to us about it, mate. I'm going to, um, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, uh, I want to point out to people that in, there was a group of people in the early days of Flickr, uh, you know, where, where all I ever did, all I ever did was spun orbs. That was it. I, I didn't know anything else throughout the first five years. And you, you, mate, in those, you know, back in 2012 and stuff, 
I'm going to show some images now. You were an orb spinning god. It was, uh, I was, <laughs> there was this group of us who were always like, I, I was always like, oh, I want to spin a better orb or make it tighter or in a crazier place. But you were, they were, they were wonderful days. And, and I, I, I look back and they were, and he, they were good days. They were, mate. And looking back, um, you know, looking back at Flickr, uh, the early days of light junkies, I was just saying to Trevor that all light painting today, it doesn't matter who, where, when, you know, we all stand on the shoulders of giants, firstly. And if you think what you're looking at in light painting is new and fresh, you've only got to go look back and flicker to realize that the DNA of all photography lives in that place. Um, and before, you know, that just happened to be, but I encourage people all the time to, to, to go back and take a look. Um, you get to see some photos of Mix and mine and, and other people that were, people would laugh at today, but it's where it all started. It, it, it's, um, it's wonderful. Yeah. And, and it was community, mate. And when I see guys like you with, your, with the three of you out on a night like this, that's what it's about, eh, man? Definitely. It's, it's all about that, Dennis. Um, that meeting new people like yeah. yourself. I wouldn't have met you if it wasn't for light painting. Um, oh. I met, I've met heaps of great people and, and done some really cool things. Seen some really cool places too. Oh. Um, as, there was a as moment, you have. Yeah, there was a moment, there was a moment in the drain where, because uh, I was with the, the, the almighty wizard Palateth, and um, <laughs> we were, it was this, it was this moment. There was, there was me, there was, a, there was a bunch of us, but I particularly remember there was, there was uh, Patrick Rochon, who had never light painted outside, let alone in a drain, and Palateth. And we're walking down this drain, and then you guys, you're coming the other way. There's just this meeting of you and Palateth, and I was just like, it was so heartwarming, mate. That was that was killer night. That I'll never oh, forget that. Nah. Uh, yeah, Me great night. Me neither. We just gelled. We just we just gelled in there. Yeah, it we was had beautiful. a great time. It was beautiful. Okay, mate. Look, I'm going to link people through to your uh, a bunch of your work. Um, I, I I I want um I want people to to realise that that you know there there is there is so much history with these image breakdowns. I'm going to be talking to a lot of people who have been light painting for under a year. I'm going to do a whole series of those, but um i appreciate the, the the energy you put into light painting mick I, I i appreciate the energy that you give to the community and um your work is wonderful and this particular image is a mind bender thank so thank you mate i appreciate it and thanks for giving us your time today as well you're welcome thank you very much for having me it's been awesome pleasure thanks mick peace brother cheers i hope you enjoyed this visit to the school of light don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll be adding videos all the time. Head over to the Light Painting Tool Shop at the website. There's a huge array of tools I've made there for you to take on your light painting journey. Peace.